Hello adventurers and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be exploring some ways that we can keep warm. Now I've discussed a few things that I personally do or have done in the past to keep warm including an electric blanket, a small handy heater, and then also hand warmers. However, on my most recent video talking about heat, we tried out a mainstay heater from Walmart that pulls about 400 watts. However, a lot of people have been interested to see if there's something else out there that might be a little bit more energy efficient and so today we're going to be testing out this guy. I have the mainstay heater here so that we can do a side-by-side -side comparison. So after we unbox this, we're gonna put them side-by-side -side and see what the main differences are. And then also, of course, plug this one in and find out how many watts that it pulls. Now, I was fortunate enough to get this as a Christmas gift from one of our fellow van friends. So thanks to Aussie Van Man, we'll be able to do this side-by-side -side comparison. However, because I did just recently pick up this one and I wanna go ahead and give it a fair shot on the road, I'm actually going to be re-gifting this one to uh, Riley because she doesn't have a heater right now and so we're gonna surprise her at the end of this video. So um, if you're ready, let's get to comparing and unboxing this guy. Okay, we're starting off with the box itself. This is a Lasco heater. It's considered to be a personal heater and it's called the My Heat Heater. This is a money saving 200 watts that's advertised on the box. And this is supposed to be used for personal use. It comes with a three year limited warranty and it is already fully assembled. As we go ahead and open up the box, it's pretty well packaged. It's pretty standard, little protectant on the top a plastic bag around it to separate the heater and the cord from everything else in the box, which includes our instructions. So we may reference those in a moment. Inside here, it's tightly banded, but there are actually two plastic pieces here. So I may have to get some scissors to hack into here, but uh, yeah, it's pretty well in there. Sometimes it happens like that. They want you to have packaging and I actually appreciate that usually because it protects the product. But in this particular case with it not being like bubble wrap or anything, I feel like this is kind of an excessive amount of plastic, but it is what it is. Okay, I just unboxed it. It's really shiny, it's purple. It does come in a variety of different colors, I believe. Now this one I can see already right off. There's something a little bit different with it. So we're gonna go ahead and compare with the side-by-side -side of the size. And again, 200 watts for this one and 400 watts for this one. So as I place them side-by-side, we can see that they are actually about the same height. They're also very similar in width. The difference is this one's a bit more rounded, this one's a bit more square. That doesn't really make much of a difference when it comes to the product itself. On this one, the button is on the side. On this one, the button is on the front. They're just a one-click button. So that part, very similar. Looking at the back of each model, again, they both appear very similar with the fan vent out the back end. Um, just the difference is the cord placement and how it kind of lines up and then where the stickers and things like that are. So nothing too crazy different between these two. The biggest difference is going to be how many watts that they pull because this one is supposed to pull half the amount of watts that this one does. But if you'll notice on the bottom of this one, this one has the tip over protection and this one doesn't look like it does. So if you were in a van and you were using these and this one fell over, it would immediately turn off. But if this one fell over, it would keep going. So why does that matter? Well, if you're in a vehicle and you're sleeping in the space and it's already very compact and small and you happen to move wrong, a vehicle's going to move just a little bit because it's on tires ultimately. Because if you'll notice, whenever you get into a van or a truck or a car, if you were to jump up and down like this, everything moves, unlike if I'm standing in a house and I do this and well, just I move. So having an ability to have a tip over protection is kind of important because you do have so many more things moving. So that would be a downside to this heater, but it's not necessarily a deal breaker. And so we're gonna explore it a little bit more. Now I did wanna get a little bit closer into these stickers on the bottom because they just have some information here. It looks like this one says it's by Lasco. It's model number 106. It is made in China and it is a move 
removable air heater. So those are kind of the specs for it just in general. But it also says it's 120 volt, 60 hertz, 200 watts, and it's AC only. So this is not a DC powered unit. So plugging it into a power station, we're going to have to use the AC connection. That's the same as the mainstay. So again, very similar in product, but now I think it's time for us to see what this guy does and uh, how many watts it really pulls because there's the difference between the running watts and the surge watts. So even though this says 200, it may have a surge watt that is over 200. So we have to find out what that magic number is in order to know if we can run it on a power station. But before we do, let's plug it into a regular plug first. I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the plastic covering and then we're going to put this into our regular wall plug just to make sure everything works okay. And if it does, then we'll plug it into a power station and then check the watts. Right into here I go with this, maybe. There we go. And I already have it turned on. Something I'm noticing right away is the surface of the heater itself is much smaller than the mainstay. You only have about a two inch by, well, oh, maybe three inch circle here. It's not very large though. Definitely smells a little plasticky out the gate. All heaters do though, it is what it is. I do recommend if you have a heater that you travel with, finding a little bag of some kind, like a little cloth bag that doesn't get dust, like a shoe duster bag, and putting it in there when you're not using it. That way things don't get into the grate and then make that really nasty smell in your van every time you turn it on. It just protects it and keeps it going a little bit longer. Overall though, it's producing heat. It's not hot to the touch as I'm sitting here and touching around, but I can definitely feel that this part will probably get a little bit warmer. This is a plastic front to it, so it's not a ceramic front, so that's a little different also. But um, overall, so far so good. I'm going to go ahead and get the mainstay one so I can do a side-by-side -side real quick and then uh, we'll dig in a little bit deeper. Okay, this is the mainstay and you can see the actual output area is larger. And so again, comparing the black circle is the output on this one versus the black ceramic area with the mesh front here. This is all the output area here. Now, I'm not sure yet how the plastic will fare when it comes to the heat itself over time. I'm not sure if it will crack or break down that's something that I'll have to have Riley do over a continuous amount of time checking it out. But I do know that with this one, because it is metal, it's a little bit more sturdy feeling. Also, whenever you're touching the front of this one, if you touch it while it is super, super hot, it is going to burn your hand because it is metal. This one, out of all reality, it gets pretty warm, but it doesn't get near as warm as this one. Now, do I recommend you touching these things with your hand in real life land? No. I have someone here to make sure that I'm okay. I'm testing all of this in a controlled environment, and I would never encourage you to touch the front of the heater if you are just checking it out for yourself. But you know, that's why I do these reviews, so I can do the dangerous work for us all. But overall, this is a good one so far. I can definitely feel the heat output. It's a nice personal heater, and I could definitely see it knocking the chill out of a cold night. And in using these, of course, you're going to need to have some kind of power. So now this is where we find out how much power that's going to be, and then we're going to do some mental gymnastics to figure out how long that means it could run with various kinds of power. Okay, to test the watts on the heater today, I brought out the Vodaman, and we're going to be doing some testing. Now this bad boy right here has been a pretty good workhorse around my house, and it does a really good job with all of my smaller appliances and devices. So I've really enjoyed using this one, so I thought this one is perfect for testing out the surge watts. Now because I have been using it a little bit though, I'm down to 67%. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the AC, I'm going to turn off the others. On this, you heard the AC kick in immediately. And then I'm going to plug in the heater. And it immediately turns on and starts to pull. And as we can see, it has a surge watt that was about 250 watts. So you need something that is going to be at least 300 watts to power this just to get it started. 300 watts is just gonna scratch the surface. That means you're going to have one hour of use tops. And that's on the high end. We've learned with heaters that they start to deplete much more rapidly as the battery dies. So in continuous hours of use, realistically, it needs to be over 
over 200 watts remaining on the battery. Otherwise, the battery can go down at any point. So if it's below 200 watts, you're likely to not have a working little heater, even if it's 201. <laughs> That's just how it is. So I would recommend something larger than 300 watts. And realistically, I usually don't make suggestions as to size of power stations because we're all different and have different needs. But I personally would not feel comfortable running a heater on anything less than 700 to 750 watts because you're going to pull it dry so quickly. And personally, I prefer over a thousand watts when running heat, just so that I can use it for a continued time. Now, does this mean you're going to be able to run the heater all night with a thousand watt power station? No. If you're doing the math and it's just 200 watts, that means you're going to have five continuous hours on the good end. Most likely you're actually going to have about four and a half really. So if you have shore power, the heaters are great. If you have unlimited power through a solar bank, this is going to be a good one. If you have spot abilities to do this, you're going to enjoy it, but at the same time, it's not going to be something that's going to run all night long. And I might suggest instead of using this as a continued heat source, pair it with something like a heating blanket so that you can knock the chill off of the air outside, but bundle up under the warmth if it's super, super cold. The power source for a heating blanket is going to pull a considerable less amount of power. In fact, most average heating blankets pull anywhere between 20 20 and 60 watts as opposed to 200. Now on here you can see it's still running and it's kind of bouncing around. So the average is anywhere between 194 and 200 watts for running watts and we've already lost 1% of the power station. Now on this particular power station, because it is a big boy that is well over a thousand watts, it says that even at 66%, we would still have 4.6 average hours that we could use. Now that's an average amount. So it could be a bit less than that. And I always encourage people when they're figuring out their power to round down instead of up. Let's face it. Things can always pull a bit less power, but more than likely, you're always going to be pulling a bit more power. Simply because if you turn on a new product, you engage something, or you plug in with something else, it's gonna suck it a little bit faster out of the battery. So, is this a good one for van life? I think it would be. And so I'm really excited about seeing how it works out for Riley. But we're gonna watch this for a little bit longer and just kind of see how much that it drops in the next 10 minutes. I'm going to set a clock for 10 minutes and see how much it falls and how much that number changes. So we're at 66%, 4.5 hours, and I'm setting the clock for 10 minutes. Okay, 10 minutes has passed, and I did check to make sure that it does not have a cutoff, and it does not. So no matter what, this is gonna be having to be something that you really put in a safe place so it does not tip over. But back to the big news, it's been going for 10 minutes and it's now 63%, meaning it lost 2% for the 10 minutes that it was going, and it is now down to 4.4 hours. So now we get to do some mental math. Which means by using this math that 2% every 10 minutes will come off of your battery for this particular battery. Now each battery is going to be a little bit different, but knowing that we're pulling 200 watts on average, you can do the math and translate it to the power station that you're interested in. But by doing this math today, 2% every 10 minutes means that 12% is going to come off in one hour. So I'm going to lose 12% of this big battery every hour. And that's until I get down to the very end when I get to that 200 watts that's left in the power station and it's just going to instantly die. So that's kind of how to do the mental gymnastics on figuring out if it will work for you. So with that said, if I was to use this particular power station and it was fully charged, I could get probably one night's sleep fully running. Again, when I use one of these, I usually don't leave it on all night. I do spot heating, or if I do have shore power, I can leave it on the majority of the night. But I really don't like anything that could potentially touch my blankets while I'm sleeping. So I personally favor on caution when it comes to using a space heater like this, no matter what. Okay, so Riley. Yeah. 
What have you been using to heat your van? Well, I either turn the car on myself or um, I just use a bunch of layers. I do also have a heating blanket, um, which only really works if you have a larger power station. So if I have one on me, then I'll use my heating blanket, but I only use it for a little bit here at a time here and there. Most of the time I just layer up. How will you use this in your SUV? Okay, so my car is one of those like push to start kind of situations. And in order to turn the car on, it's you have to like hit the brake to turn the car on. So like the only time I can think that it would be really nice is for the very early mornings, especially this winter, when it's like stupid cold out and I don't wanna yet climb out of bed to have to climb in the front seat to hit the brake so I can turn the car on. So it'd be really useful to have something just yes. to quickly like turn on to get it warm enough so that I can finally climb out of bed so that I can go about my day. How do you like the feel of how much output it does? I feel like this is actually surprisingly warm. Like, like it's really, really warm. I, I didn't think it would be this good, especially for only 200 watts, you said, right? Yes, yeah. 200 watts. And uh, Tyson is also here. So he is wanting to get on, on the warmth action. He's going to love it. He camps with Riley. Yeah. So now that um, we've kind of gone through and tested the watts, Welcome to your 200 watt heater. I'm so excited, thank you. Now you can get it on the road and we can thank Aussie Van Man for this because thank he you, made Aussie this Van review Man. possible. Do do and it? now he's gonna be warming Riley's van. Woohoo, finally, hopefully it'll be less torturous for me. So now as we hit the road uh, this winter together, are you going to be excited about mornings so that we can get an earlier start some days? Well, I'll be, I'll be more excited, yes. <laughs> ask for it's been a good time remember guys we're not here for a long time but we are here for a good time and riley's time is about to get a lot warmer <laughs> till next time guys remember if you're looking for a heater to kind of look at some of these options 400 watts 200 watts which one works best for your battery till next time bye